All right, the man, there he is. Great to see you. I, I don't get to see you anymore, big fella, but you, uh, here you are. Good to see you, mate. Uh, great to be here, Robbo. Great to be uh, joining you. Uh, I've been watching the episodes thus far, and I was just trying to find the right piece of memorabilia or something that I could actually identify with. And yes. The only one I could come up with was, with, was that. Look at you. Now, yeah. in the old days, what they used to do was give you a caricature for your 21st birthday. Yep, yep. So the boys paid for the caricature, and... It was probably symbolic of what I was going through. I, I drove a prelude because I fitted into a prelude. What a wanker. Back then. Um, and then I had a mobile phone, one of the first ones, which is the size of, you Look know what? I got, my ear, I got my pirate earrings in. Oh. got the form guide in one hand and on the side, the tunnel and a uh, sombre on the other on the other side. Oh, my so, God. People won't know what the tunnel is these days. They'd uh, have no idea. And it's probably best it stays that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So wonder, no, it's great to be great to be here and great memories. It's, it's a wonder there's not a picture of you holding up the uh, the beer, uh, the uh, the drink card from the Star Mart, <laughs> the Arizona, and the tunnel as well. <laughs> the trifecta. I, had, I, I did have three friends that were um, on the Melbourne list. He never played a game. Who uh, got lots of drink cards? I know neither had Burnsy and a couple of other boys. Yes. Hoppy had a couple as yes. well. So. Um, yeah, so Melbourne had about 40 representatives every Saturday night, but there was probably only four of us, <laughs> four. Four of us in there that had played. <laughs> that happened to me a few times. A couple of blokes that were similar in look to me that would come up to me and say, Robbo, I actually uh, went out the other night and I said I was <laughs> you and I got a drink card. High five, thank you very much. I'm like, no worries, aim to please. Hey, hey, Ox, I maintain to everyone that I talk to that you were the most fun to play football with. You brought the fun to footy. Where did that come from? Because I And I mean that, because I played with some great guys in football, but I'm so blessed that I got to play with you early days. Uh, you know, Gary and that, they're, they're a bit older than you, but I got to play a few games with you towards the end of your career, and it was just always fun. I remember that the most. Where did that come from? Um. Well, footy is difficult. It's not. It's not an easy sport to play, and um, you know, there's a lot of pressures on. Yes, you get rewarded. You get, you know, you get paid well. You get the accolades. You get all of that sort. Of, you get the drink cards, yep. uh, which are really important. But, but, but it's hard enough being with forty blokes pretty much all the time and, and not enjoying it. So, um, I know that you trained really. You're a really good trainer, and I and I pride myself on. On training well, I wasn't great in the gym, but mm. once we went out onto the ground, oh, yeah. I, actually, I actually loved training. And I, I think if you loved it, it made it a lot easier. But mm. being out there was about you know enjoying it with your mates. I remember we were out at uh, Kerry um, Grammar one time. I oh, know Caulfield Grammar, Caulfield, Caulfield Grammar, Caulfield. And um, I remember one of the coaches said, you know, just enjoy it, boys. You don't realise how good you've got it because you're actually mm. you're playing footy and you're training and you're fit and you're healthy. That's what he did for a living, you know, and he, and he pointed out some people over there picking up rubbish, and I thought, yeah, gee whiz, you know, we have got it really, really good. So just enjoyed it, and I loved it. I just loved training. I loved being with the boys, and yeah. I love storytellers. You know, Hoppy was a great storyteller, oh. um, just a wonderful storyteller, and, and Ingo, and just all, all the boys that we, we played with yeah. brought something different, and you can bring that together and, and harness it. It was it was a wonderful environment to be in. So you, you couldn't but not enjoy it. Even though you have injuries and you've got issues going on and your form's up and down, mm. the one thing that was constant was being with your mates yeah. and, and, and training your tail off to try and get uh, the best out of yourself. 100%. I, and I talked about this last week and the feedback from the people watching it was they loved hearing about the struggle early days uh, getting to the club. It wasn't easy for us like it is for the guys now you know they've got it all laid on for us and you've got your own account and i'm sure we'll get into that but what made it easier for me was just rolling into the club and being around all those guys that you talked about it was just so much fun and and giving and friendly we were laughing every single day and to all the fans watching right now i swear we would train and ox was playing a game out there like he was playing he was hitting you like you'd lead to him and he was hitting you so hard on the lead and i loved it too because i'd love to clunk him but he was doing the three sick the, the you know the u-turns and the and just playing it like there was a crowd it was awesome mate it was it was good times wasn't it yeah it was we used to have two or three spectators which was yeah. uh, which was handy yeah. um <laughs> Look, we weren't we were like the, the greatest supported club, but the people that were involved, they were loyal. Mm. You know, they were. You know, I, I'm still I'm still today really close with my player sponsor that I had from the day I walked into the Nara Tide, and that's Rich and Denise Adam. Yep. And um, we're still great mates. He'd always come down and watch training. Yeah. You know, and there was 
a lot of the coterie boys who we're all still great mates with, you know, with Hassett or it doesn't matter who it is, mm-hmm. but we just became friends of these people and uh, and and I went I went further than just uh, you know players and supporters. It, we became good friends, you know. Yeah. Ian Johnson was at my wedding, yeah. um, you know, a, a superhuman being, and they're the sort of people that that you love to put a show on for. Mm-hmm. And and while we're in this position now of, of playing finals and hopefully going the whole way, it's not for ex players because we've had a taste of it. Yep. We might have won a grand final. We've had a taste of what, but to see those people rewarded for their their loyalty and their hard earned, that's what footy's about. That's what this premiership isn't about the ex players. Make, yeah. make no mistakes because mm. we've, we've been able to run out in grand final day. It's about the Richard Adams and it's about the Ian Johnsons and it's about my mum and it's about you know your old man. It's yeah. about everybody that's invested in getting this team yep. to the big dance. And hopefully, you know, lifting the cup aloft in, in two weeks' time. I've thought about I love that you just said that because I've thought about this often. I can't wait till we do win that premiership because we will. And I hoped it was going to be a time that we could actually be at the ground ox and watch it. But uh, if it's this year, it's not going to happen. But anyway, I wanted to see the faces of the people that have given so much to this club. And I know, and you know, because we've been there in the background since retirement, seen how hard and how much passion they put into it. I want to see their faces when we hold that cup aloft. You know, it's going to happen. We, our fingers are crossed for it one day. But, but let's, let's, let's turn the clock back. To the early days of the Ox, before he was the Ox, he was David Schwartz, just a kid growing up in Sunbury out in the West, uh, and you were barracking for Hawthorne back in the day. Yeah. You, you, I think you loved Dermot, didn't you? Wasn't he your favourite and Piggy and those oh, guys? Yeah, yeah oh. Dermot was, Derm was a star, but uh, was Terry Wallace for some reason, I don't what? know why, but... <laughs> I just had this love for Terry Wallace, number sixteen. He was. Is that where you got the uh, the headband thing from? Did you steal that? No, from him? He, well, he wore a little bit there. He had long hair, but no, no. I told, no, I only I wore a headband because I had long hair. I just had to keep it out of my eyes. Yeah. I, I, went through, I went through that uh, in nineteen ninety two. I thought, geez, you're a good looking rooster. Long hair will just will just top it off. Yeah. And I look back at it now and I go, well, what, what was I think? Anyway, so but I yeah, I was from Sunbury. I love the Hawks. Um, but it's amazing what happens. I remember playing against Hawthorne in an under-19 game, and I was playing against Jason Taylor, Swizzy. Yep. And he belted, he belted me, and I thought, Jesus, I hate Hawthorne. Yeah. And from that moment, <laughs> yeah. from that moment, and I even had my membership for the next three years. Oh, yeah. um, and I kept it, and I was, I was a member of Hawthorne when, when I played my first senior game for Melbourne. Yeah. And But it was only, I think it was just sentimental that I had it, because yeah. I'd had it all the way through. Yeah. Um, but once you play against the opposition, and it's really hard to explain, but yep. I hate Hawthorne now mm-hmm. probably more than any other sidebar, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, and I don't know why. I love Clarko. I, I don't know. I just, they really... Give me the shits yeah. for whatever re- whatever reason it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I respect them because what they're able to do, yeah. and what even when I break from, I'm winning a flag every four or five years. So they were they were super successful. I'm probably jealous of them in a lot of ways yeah. because yeah. they've been able to achieve, and you know they were winning grand finals for fun for yeah. a long time. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I just moved on, and yeah, but Sunbury Sunbury was an un- unbelievable place to grow up because. Mm. It toughened you up, you know. You didn't take anything for granted, and uh, you wanted to prove a lot of people wrong that you could, that you could actually climb out and and make a make a go for it. Yeah. Now I don't want to go into too much ox because I think it's been done enough. But you had a, a, a tough time early days, and I I just want to bring out the importance of your mum in your life. Um, it's been fantastic for you, of course. All mums are in their sons' uh, footballing careers and daughters, of course. But she's been extraordinary for you. You had a tough time early days, but you're able to overcome that and still make yeah. it to the very top. Can you give us some comments on that? Oh, Mears is a champ. Um, Mears, Mears calls a spade a shovel. You, she, yeah. you, you know where you stand with Mary. Uh, she's worked, uh, worked in police prosecutions for 20 odd years. Yeah. She knows she knows bulldust from yeah. truth. Yeah. Um, she told me a lot of truths about when I first arrived in Melbourne about certain characters and people and. And I dismissed them. And then after I retired, I actually understood yeah. what she meant because a lot of truths come out after you retire and you're probably blinded by what you go through. And yeah. Yeah. so so the one thing I've learned out of everything is normally your mum's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> occasionally she'll be wrong, but more often than not, they're right. Yeah. And, um, you know, having kids now, I know my kids don't listen to me. 
yep. uh, all the time. They, they probably take a bit in and they they siphon in what they want to listen to. Yep. So you just got to keep drilling in the information, make sure you give them every opportunity, and that's what mum did. Yep. So I mean, your parents did, and most parents have done the same that they give their kids the chance to maybe chase those dreams. Because we lived in Sunbury. We had no, there was no public transport. The Tullamarine Freeway was a one lane each yeah, way. Yeah. Um, still is. Under still nine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> under 19s. Under 19s, we would train last. So yeah. what they would do, go after the seniors. So the seniors would train at four. The resis come on at six. We'd come on at 6.30, uh, between 6.30 and 8.30. And we'd, it'd be cold. It'd be junction. It was it was terrible. Yeah. So we wouldn't get home till 11.30 at night. Yeah, yeah. Mum would be up doing, she'd be working three jobs. And this would happen four days a week. So it wasn't easy, but that's what parents do. They give their yeah. kids a chance. Yeah. It's, and Stinger talked about this last week, mate. He talked about, um, I think he might have been living out, uh, where did he say? It was out uh, Waverley Way or something like that. He, he was living and he was getting home at about 11.30 at night when he was on the senior list. Talk to me about that, mate, because it was like that for us. I remember... We, it, my training story would be something like this. You know, we got first drafted, and I'd see Gary and yourself, and you do you do one lake the day after a game. We were running a lake, which is yes. Albert, Albert Park Lake. So that's about five k's um, door to door, four to five k's um, from the junction over door all the way around it. And our training, the guy who was running the uh, Jonesy, who was running our fitness at the time, said to us, 18-year-olds, you've got to do two lakes the day after a game. Two, as hard as you can. 10K, yep. run as fast as you can because you've got to catch up to the likes of Gary Lyon. What about that? You know, <laughs> Early stories for you, mate, the training and, yeah. and ha- how professional it wasn't. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was, um, we used to have our first training session back was a 10K time trial. If you didn't break 40 minutes, yeah. um, you had extras. Now, I was lucky because I played a lot of basketball and I was umpiring, and I, I used to be able to run 38 and a bit, but mm-hmm. most of the boys couldn't run 40. Like, like at the very best, the big boys can't yeah. run that. Yeah. Like, it was impossible. Then we did the 100-100s. Yeah. You know, yeah. we got blokes fainting, and yeah. we did a, we did a 40 100s one day, and it was 44 degrees. Yeah, yeah. And they said, You're not having a drink. Right. No way. That's weak. That's weak. <laughs> so, so it was just that sort of stuff. And then we did a 100-100s one Friday and on the Saturday we did a 5.2k swim down at Footscray. Mm. Like and fair dinkum, unless you're unless you're a good swimmer, that was really tough because it wasn't just freestyle. It was butterfly. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. it was with your clothes on. It was with your legs tied up with ropes. And so I, I think there was a lot of trial and error. Yeah, there, <laughs> there, there wasn't the science around it. Remember Matthew Phoebe, Mouse Phoebe. For those of you who don't know, was one of our fittest. Yeah, like he could run all day. Yeah, he he did he did a hundred hundreds. That was our big thing at the end of the, the end of the year. Remember before yep. we went away for Christmas break. Now, we had to do these hundreds in like under 11 seconds or something like that, and then you'd get, well, maybe 14 seconds, let's be real. Yeah, it was 14. <laughs> 14. I, I, think it was, I think it was 14 down and 15 back. Yes, yeah. And, and, got, and, and every 24th, every 20, uh, 24, you get a two-minute break, and 50, you get a two-minute break, right. and 76, you get a two-minute that's break. That's right, exactly right. Well, Matthew Phoebe did it with his brother Stephen because he had to go home early for Christmas, and then he backed up the next day and did it again with us. We were all dying. This freak just did, the, did them all again. But it, look, it, it was, was it yeah. was ridiculous. I think we ruined uh, 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 Big Juice Newton's uh, career. He, he got uh, that that groin injury stuff because he was doing two lakes. If you he remember was, Big Michael Newton, he, 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 was, he was blowing up. And you know, it was that was what it was about. And, and they used to always give, they used to give us one football each, and they'd put your number on it. And if you didn't bring your footy yeah. to training, you get you get penalties. And yeah. if you lost your footy, well, look out. <laughs> Yes. And the boys were trying to kick each other's footies into the lake, and you'd have right. to go and get it out of the lake, and and then your footies been stolen, so you'd have to go and get one, and then try and etch your number into the football, and, That's right. and a lot of games, a lot of games were played. But that was, but you look back at it, and that was teaching responsibility. Yeah. That's all it was to bring your footy, make sure it's in good shape, that it's pumped up, that it's. That we used to nugget them back. Well, I used to nugget them yeah, back yeah, then. I did too. Yeah. He used to love putting the nugget on them, and yeah. you know, and just. And that was the other thing, you know. If training started at four, we used to get there at three forty-five or whatever. Yeah. And then by the end of my career, if training started at four, you got in there at one thirty. Like it was, it was, you know, you were doing so much more yep. prep and. Yep. Yeah, it, it changed a hell of a lot. It went, it went real professional mm. towards the end of my career, and you know we have a look at it now, and it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, they've, they've pretty much nutted it. Yeah, they have, and look. When I first started my career and I was on the rookie list, remember I got dropped back to the rookie list and I decided to write myself a mission statement. I was going to train my ass off and do the extras. I was doing two weight sessions and those weight sessions in those days, we'll start at seven and finish in at nine. Spew yeah. sessions in the gym for, for crying out loud. I'd go back in the afternoon 
uh, after work, work, people, I, I said work. We all had jobs back in 1997, 98. <laughs> well, some of us did. And, and then I'll do another Wade session, you know, just to try to prove. Uh, yeah. that, that was it for us. It was, it, was, it was different times. And, of course, these days they've got it nice and easy. That's because the money's changed. But anyway, we don't hold yeah. it against it because it's not their fault. And they're doing pretty good at the moment, mate. What have you seen from afar from your demons that you love so much? Oh, they're camaraderie. You can tell they love each other. You yeah. can tell that they're they're invested. That they, you know, winning footage okay, but you can just tell that they're they're all about one another. They're all about sacrifice. So, yeah. you know, even even you know even Nathan Jones. I saw Jonesy the other night, and he was he looked really, you know, you can tell he's disappointed. He's not getting a game, and he might yeah. miss out on that chance. But he did all the heavy lifting the last four years, the last five years. He's the one that, you know, that. He was the one that we could rely upon. Mm. That's footy clubs, yep. you know. So in, in the early eighties, it was Robbie Flower. Yep. In the in the late eighties, it was you know Gaz and Jimmy, and yeah. in the early nineties, it might have been you know myself and Stinger, and you know whatever. But each person has their role. You know, you were there in the in the late nineties and you know the two, early two thousand. So in comes the generation and moves on. And if you're lucky enough to actually be there when they start winning flags, well. You know, awesome credit to you. Yeah, and, yeah. But it, but yeah. it's but it's a club it's a club building, uh, and it's a club driven. You know, it's to a try and get to yeah. try and get there at the right time. That's right, and and creating that culture as well. And they're doing yeah. it very well at the moment. Let's go back then again because I love going forward and back. But I love to go back yep. to the early nineties. I wasn't there, but I've seen the footage, mate. And it must have been heady days for you. You're there with you know the greats like Jimmy, Gary, Todd. Um, you know, a, a, a Stephen Tinga, you know, just some really great players, and you were hitting your straps uh, just before you did your knee. You were playing your best football, and it was something to behold. Now, I know you hate and you shy away from the comments that you were going to be better than Wayne Carey. I believe that you were. Uh, a lot of people I talk to believe that you were, and they're not just Melbourne supporters. You played football like you played basketball. You were, you were you were doing different things that people hadn't seen before. Talk to me about those days, mate, because they were pretty exciting early 90s. Chance to win a premiership. Uh, well, a bit like what you went through, Robbo. So when you're, when you're practising and you're mucking around with your mates, and that's all we did. So we just had kick the kick with mates at school and whatever. It was about how, how, many, how, how many shoulders you can sit on, yeah. how, many, how many people you can get away from, <laughs> um, what don't argue you can give. So it was all about outdoing one another. And we, had, we were pretty competitive. Uh, in Sunbury and even when you get down to Melbourne, you got you know you get down there and there's 80 kids together. So you're trying to stand out. Yeah. So I was lucky that you know I was big and I was agile and and I think I think agility and footy go hand in hand and, and that's why I'm a huge believer in basketball complementing what what uh, footy can give you and yeah, yeah. you know you went through it. We're seeing Blue Jackson do it. We're seeing Christian Petrarca do it. Scotty West, Peter Dean. The list goes on forever. Yeah, so I yeah. think there is a great compliment. Some would say, look, they're going to be good without it. But I, I firmly believe that basketball gives you those skills. So yep. I, I I didn't want to give up basketball. I was made to give it up at 18 yeah. because yeah. Barmy just said, uh, sorry, Swoop said, you've just got to, you got to concentrate and we can't have you getting injured playing yeah. basketball. So it, it was the thrill of actually trying something different. Yeah. And a bit like when they started jumping motorbikes. You know, the first one was to do a somersault, and the yeah. next one was to do a somersault with no hands. The next one was somersault, no hands, no legs. That's what I like to do in footy was just to try new things and yeah. Yeah. You know, and just try and experiment a little bit. And you know, unfortunately, in '95 I fell over, but yeah. I would I wouldn't take that back because it taught me it taught me all the other things in life that are really important, like empathy and yeah. you know, yeah. uh, patience and um, just just beautiful skills that if I hadn't have got injured, I may not have learnt. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been would have been good to be able to, you know, Roll to be through. to be recognised even further. But it, it's not a it's not even a second thought, really. Yeah, exactly. And I think about it too. You know, what if I'd have done this? What if I'd have done that? You know, unfortunately for you, you went down with three knee injuries. And and look, I'm not going to go into that too much too because you just touched on it beautifully. I think it taught you a lot of lessons. But then you come back, right, and you win a best and fairest. Now I've never seen to this day a best and fairest winner receive such a standing ovation as what you got that day. I think it might have been, was it Melbourne Town Hall? I can't remember where it was when you won. Yeah. Melbourne yeah, Town Hall. Everybody stood up and when it's, you know, you get that extended clap, but when it was time to like, okay, let's wind this thing up, it went harder again because yeah. everyone just loved the way you went through that tragic time with your knees because they wanted you to play and then you came back and you won a best and fairest. Feelings for you in that moment. Oh, it was great because so many people have put in hard yards, yeah. you know, 
And the one thing about, and this is where mental health is different. With an injury, you get an injury, you just you get over it. Mm. It's a hamstring, you know it's four weeks. It's a knee, it's 12 months. If you do it against another 12, you do it again. You, you, there's a timeline. Yeah. So so unlike COVID and unlike mental health, where there is no end, end, um, end line or there's no mm. finish line, it's mm. really difficult to, to grasp. So I, I've had a lot, of, I've reflected over the last 18 months locked down, mm. spending a lot of time by yourself. You actually think about stupid things like that. Yeah. Um, it was an injury. It, it was just, but with the injury came a lot of sacrifice from a lot of people. Mm. You know, Price Warren, Andrew Daff, Mary Toomey, uh, Sammy, um, Terry, um, all, every trainer, every physio, yeah. um, you know, from the boot starter up, they get you to give you a chance to be your best. So mm. Mm. there's no doubt I wouldn't have come back. You know, I changed, you know, Neil Barn was a huge uh, influence on me changing from one surgeon to John Bartlett. You know, mm. If I don't change surgeons, my knee probably doesn't hold up. So mm. everything just worked for a reason. You know, you, you, you entrust what the club put in front of you and you follow it. And, yeah. and, and I think that's why when someone succeeds or someone fails or we have a death or something happens to someone involved with the footy club, yeah. there's no better place to be because everyone comes together. And, and some of my proudest moments have been my saddest moments. Yeah. When Troy Broadbridge passed away, yeah. when Sean White passed away, when Jimmy passed away, when Robbie Flower passed away, yeah. when when players have been knocked down and you come together, uh, and we've had players that we played with that have gone through really hard times. Mm. When you come together and you catch up, it's like it's yeah. like you were there yesterday, and you feel as though you're a part of something that is greater than any performance you can ever do on the field. Yeah. And that's what being in the Melbourne Footy Club for me is like. It is about it's about all those beautiful things that sit outside the MCG that make Melbourne what it is. Mate, beautifully put. I love. I used to love the the passion from those guys, that, like the boot starters and the masseurs that were doing it for probably five bucks an hour, not even getting paid most of them. But it's, it's the way they did it, that they just wanted to be there. They loved it so much and you loved them for it. It was a big extended family. It got me through a lot of tough times too. And we've all had tough yeah. times. You had some tough times with the gambling. You overcome that. There's some really important people in your life and we won't go into it too deeply, but you know, it's important that we touch on it. Your post-footy career went from from you know being this uh, AFL star to we got into the gambling a little bit then a little bit of trouble but then you've overcome it beautifully and now you're absolutely flying so I want you to talk to me quickly about that but talk to me about now life now what you're doing now you got two beautiful kids Indian Coops Indy's killing it with the basketball Coops does whatever he wants to really doesn't he he's got so much talent but he'll choose something at some point uh, yeah. you run me through all of that quickly before we finish up mate yeah so so as I said, a lot of people help you to get to where you're going to get to. So I was I was fly blown with gambling. So we got through that. We started getting clean in 2005, and then we've been clean 16 years. And that happens because of great family and friends and, mm. and what have you. We've got Coops and Indy. Yeah, Co- Coops is um, Coops going to be a pilot. He wants to be a pilot. He's doing your 11 and 12s uh, at the moment. So that's his plan. Um, he'd love to play with Melbourne, but he said to me the other day, he said, "Yeah, but Dad, you know, I probably just didn't train hard enough." I said. Mate, you didn't pick up a footy for three years. What do you mean, train hard enough? He's, he's now he's now six five, and he's actually oh. developing. He's developing really late. So Come on. was that? Did I see an uh, image of him dunking the basketball the other day on Facebook? Yeah, he's been he's been dunking for a while. Oh. So he's good. And then and then he saw um, Sammy Walsh down the beach yesterday, yeah. and he got a photo with him. And he went up to him. He said, "Oh, you know, great to meet you. I think you're going to win a brown loan." Yeah. And Sam goes, "Oh, thanks, mate." And Kim strings me. He goes, "Dad." I reckon he knows he's going to win a brown line. That's how confident he is. I said, well, mate, you need that. You do. Even, you know, if you, if you think you're going to, you're not going to win one if you're not going to think you're going to win one. I said, that's just confidence. He goes, gee, Dad, he's, he's not very big, though. <laughs> I said, you don't need to be. You don't need to be. Have a look at Caleb oh, Daniel. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So so he's going well. Um, you know, it's... I, I stepped away from the club for a long time because I had to clean myself up and yep. I, had get, I had to get right and... You know, I, I lost a lot of friends along the way. You know, my best friends when I was playing was Matthew and Stephen Phoebe. Yeah. And I, so I haven't spoken to either of them in a long time. And, yeah. and, you know, they've got their own they've got their own issues that they're dealing with. I've got my family. and But the best thing I did was move down the coast because I just needed a fresh start. I needed to, you know, do what I wanted to do. And um, But I'm really lucky. I'm now in business with um, Mark Lagoudiche, 
um, from Carlton and Craig Matheson from Carlton. I've got a media business, yep. buying, a, uh, buying and selling media and planning, creative, digital and all that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, I would have been at SCM, but I got sacked by Craig Hutchison, who's just a terrific fella. Um, we, we don't need to go into that. Um, but I'm now working at 3W and 9. So yes. it's um, it's been one hell of a journey. And yeah. if, I, if I don't play footy, I'm probably not doing radio. I'm probably not doing media. So right. footy, whilst it's not there, has opened up. You know, door after door after door after door, especially at the tunnel on a Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, mate. Quickly before you go, toughest opponent. I always thought Mark Harvey, pound for pound, yeah. just was unbelievable because he was just a, he was just a, he was just a scrapper. But yeah. you just knew you were going to play with him. I thought Craig Kelly was the dirtiest. Yeah, Ned, he was just a pincher <laughs> and a and a biter and all that sort of yes, stuff. He was. Um, I and I and I think that Glenn Jakovic just for his size. Yeah. And he did get big one year. He yeah, wasn't that big. He, was he wasn't that big, big in 93, but in 94, he got huge. Big question marks. He, he, he must have worked really hard in that gym. So, <laughs> and Jack was, Jack was really good. He was yeah, a terrific he, player. Uh, look, let's talk about, lastly, the most talented player you played with. Of course, you know, excluding myself, the, yeah, yeah, the most yeah, talented I, I'm player. I'm not going to embarrass you. <laughs> I, 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 I won't embarrass you. Alan Jakovic. Yep. Barna. Yep. Was yep. the most talented. Yep. Were the most talented pound for pound, the most skillful. Yeah, I had a couple like Stephen Tingo and Adam Uze. I, yeah. I love, I love both of them. Um, and then my good mates, um, obviously Nita and Hoppy, and the yeah. two Phoebes, and and then I lived with Alistair Nicholson and Clayton Gardner. No, sorry, I'll rephrase it. Alistair Nicholson and Clayton Gardner and Damien Gasper lived with me. Live with you, uh, and um, <laughs> I had a hell of a time with them. So. But you know that forward line. I love working under Chris Fagan. Yeah, I thought he, he was he was outstanding as our forward line coach, mm. and mm. I was really blessed to have played with some amazing forwards over the journey. What about that forward line? Uh, that I can say because it was the, the time I was playing. You had, I had Schwartz, Neats, Farmer. We had Shawnee Smith in there for a while as well. Yeah. Just there was a lot of goals coming out of there, wasn't there? Yeah, there was. I had. I also had. I also had Gary Lyon, Andy Lovell. Oh. Um, I uh, also had Martin Pike, um, I had Gle- uh, Alan Jakovic. It, it was yeah. it was um, it was amazing. It <laughs> was you know we we had a plethora of re- we you know we had some really good players come through it, but yeah. not only that, good people, yeah, really really good people. And the last one I want to mention is Rodney Grinder yeah. because yeah. balls is such a big part of the past players and yeah. and what we do. I remember balls one day I was on the field and. Um, I got a message off uh, Swoop, and I, I told the runner to go himself, yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, tell the coach to go like this, and did all do. that. <laughs> and Rodney Grinner heard it. He uh-huh. came up to me, grabbed me by the scruff of the jumper, and he said, "You ever disrespect the runner again?" He said, "Doesn't matter what happens or what he said. That message is coming from your boss. Mm. Pull your head in." Mm. And I learned right then and then that I was being the biggest muppet of all, mm. and. I learned right then and there that the coach was the king yep. and you have to listen. And whether you like it or not, you deal with it later, but yeah. don't carry on like a pork chop. So Rod Grinder, and I, and I love balls. He hit blows as hard as old desert boots. Ask Terry Wallace. One of the, one of the, one of the great clubmen. In fact, probably our greatest clubman yep. um, that, that you could ever imagine. That's a great wrap. And, mate, that has been sensational. It's a trip down memory lane. We're, we're talking stories. We're, we're doing the, the furfies again, mate. It was absolutely brilliant. Mate, I can't wait till lockdown just buggers off and the world goes back to normal and we can catch up, mate, and have a few of these together. It's been too what about, long. What about we do this? We win the flag. Yep. I invite every player that we've ever played with down to Bowen Heads. Yep. And we get on it for a month. Don't have to ask me twice, mate. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a few furpies drunk there, I would have thought. <laughs> well, Ox, uh, well done. mate, thank you so much for coming on the show. Love seeing you. Pleasure. Thanks, Robert. See you, big fella.